you, given the, given the wonderful freedom of a secular conversation, where no one's going to say anything about your right to say it, why don't you say what you actually think? Mm. How about that? Uh, OK, yes, yes, Anne, then I'd love to hear some things. That what I find interesting about your book, Christopher, is that everyone's the same, and yet we're all violently different. And if you are a cultural Catholic as I am, I don't listen to what the Pope says every day and take my guide from him. My mother, who's 84, says she had a, a Vatican bypass 30 years ago. You know, <laughs> it, it isn't like you see. Maybe because you're not a believer, you don't understand that... Sounds within, like progress of a kind. With, no, but <laughs> she, she converted from a, a completely non-believing family when she was about 20. But the, the thing is that... Religion is so manifestly pluralist as well. I mean, there's so many different ways in which people see God. And even within the Catholic Church, there's violently different um, ways in which people practice their faith. Did you say and violently? The idea... <laughs> I missed that. You did say violently. Well, violently I know you Well, I agree with you. I agree with you on all that that you say about violence among religion. And, and that's the point. There's a, I like the old Greeks and the Romans. You had a god of war and a god of peace. And, you know, you had different kinds of gods. I like that. But the, the idea that we're all following the Pope, I think, is a bit misguided. OK, uh, I'm going to... You're kidding. either a Roman Catholic or not. You can be tons of kinds of Catholic. Oh, you'd be surprised. There are several... Stuff. There are five Popes I know about. There's a Coptic Pope, there's an Eastern Pope... There's no, all right. Well, I'm most, talking about the one in Rome. not accepting the authority um, of the Holy Father, I, I leave it to... Uh, this father, but I mean, I think that's not. I think since about people who, people who take their faith a la carte and cafeteria style don't impress me very much <laughs> on the points of principle and conviction Look, that we're supposed if, to be if talking Catholics about. If following the Pope, they'd all have ten children. They don't. Well, Frank that's Brennan, that's, can a, that's I, a start I, too. Can I, can I hear Frank Brennan <laughs> on the the, 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 the fundamental point that uh, Christopher Hitchens made, which is uh, how can you say something which is clearly against the teachings of your church, clearly against the teachings of the Pope? I haven't said anything clearly against teaching my church <laughs> or against my Pope. Uh, I have drawn a distinction. So, but hang on a sec. Is, hom is, 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 homo is homosexuality a sin or otherwise? And is, if it is a sin, is it the sort of sin that would see you go to hell according to Roman Catholicism? No, uh, homosexuality is not a sin. It's a, it's a disposition. Uh, if you want to <laughs> argue, <laughs> if you want to argue about whether particular homosexual acts are appropriate for an individual in a moral context that would require a pastoral discussion with that individual. What we were discussing previously was what should be the law in a civil society such as Australia where you have people of different religious convictions and the question was whether or not there should be same-sex marriage. Now that is not an issue which is resolved by determining what the Catholic Church says to its own members it regards as moral or immoral. They're quite distinct questions. Uh well, Ali, you're on the same question, if you like. Um, is, is homosexuality a sin in Islam? I'll get to that. The, the thing I want to say... No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> what, no, no. But there's an there's a important distinction here. and I get often frustrated with this discourse of lumping the Islamic tradition in with the Christian tradition, particularly the Catholic tradition, because they're structurally so fundamentally different. The Catholic tradition has a church which has a, a kind of divine imprimatur and authority. The Islamic tradition is a far more anarchic tradition in a sense. Uh, there is no centralised authority, especially in the, the Sunni tradition. So to say the Islamic teaching on anything is X is a position that immediately becomes contestable. You can try to verify it statistically or otherwise, but the point is that at the very least in theory, if not in practice, any position that you take is a position that you take that may or may not, that, that may be fallible and is open to being contested by other Islamic theologians or, or other Muslims and so on. So on any question, whether it be homosexuality or it be anything, you will find a position that the, the majority take. And on the question of homosexuality, undoubtedly, if you, if you took a poll in the Muslim world, uh, you would find that most people would consider it sinful behaviour. But uh, if you took... Dodging it. It's not the, what Muslims think, it's what Islam teaches. Yeah, but, okay, but my question, is, my question is, what exactly Dodging is your repository it. of... A, a list of Islamic uh, conclusions. There is no book called Islamic law. There is no Islamic body that says uh, this is what Islam teaches. It is. It's an, it has for fourteen hundred years been an ongoing conversation. So, and what ongoing was... conversations are very good. Yeah, and, that, and, and my, but that's my point. If if there is a criticism I would make of the Muslim world, it is this: it is that particularly in the post-colonial era, as religion has become 
an identity movement rather than something that's actually anything to do with spirituality and faith, in my view. Um, particularly in the post-colonial world, that religiosity, Islam has become instrumentalised as a list of conclusions, as a political ideology, as though there is some manifesto you can just download from a computer and install into a society. It doesn't work that way, certainly not in the classical tradition. The classical tradition was one of constant debate. That's why uh, it was very difficult to get something like an inquisition going. We managed it at some point, but it was not terribly successful and it ultimately <laughs> crumbled because you can't ultimately centralise authority uh, to make definitive statements on behalf of God in the Islamic tradition. That's an act of polytheism to do that right, in the Islamic I'm just going to uh, interrupt the flow for a minute because we have another question tonight. It comes from Heidi Crichton. Uh, yes, my question is for Christopher Hitchens. Um, with many voters using a politician's religious pers persuasion to influence their vote, do you expect to see in your lifetime an openly atheist politician be appointed to the head of government, for example, for Australia? Britain or the United States? Uh, I'm not going to let Christopher answer this immediately. I'd <laughs> rather uh, throw it around the panel first. Uh, Frank Brennan. I think undoubtedly. I mean, perhaps not so readily in the United States, uh, or if in the United States the presidential candidate were atheist, he or she would probably still proclaim some religious conviction in that that's part of the United States. But I think here in Australia, whether or not one of our political leaders I would think was an atheist or of a religious persuasion I think is almost an irrelevance to the Australian community. Okay, let's hear from Anne Henderson on that. I mean, uh, I oh. can't think of any atheist uh, Prime Ministers, Australian Prime Ministers to date. Atheist. You might, you might well, answer. It's certainly not openly did atheist. Did Goff openly proclaim he was a believer? But anyway, the, the, it's not, not so Bob much... <laughs> It's not so much um, whether you're an atheist or an agnostic or a believer, it's what you say to the people you are. I find it interesting at the moment, and I wouldn't have thought it would have happened in the 1980s, that all leaders of countries in the West um, seem to want to go to church every Sunday. Um, Christian churches. It was interesting that Tony Blair wouldn't be, wouldn't take um, on being a Catholic. Or I think he's is he considering it now? He's done it. Became a Catholic now after he left um, his position as Prime Minister. 